Previously, we stood up the post frame walls to our 30 by 40 pole barn shop. Now we're going to be marking and rolling trusses and everything necessary to keep moving with this build. And now something I've never seen before, we're going to integrate the most energy efficient building method with the oldest building method to a pole barn. And said not to worry about not a chance of rain good day to put up pole barn I think we're not on a rain delay I think we're getting rained out Time to work on these trusses and rather than work on these trusses up in the air measure them out mark them dancing in the wind 25 feet in the air we're gonna do it as they're stacked right now and just measure them out but you need to pop all the bands so because with the bands we're gonna be fighting what we want to do straighten them all out so they all match which right now they don't and we'll match them and mark them all at one time. Make it easy and accurate. All right, so what I'm wanting to do, I want to line up every one of these things and just the hammer is the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mark all these. We're gonna line them up together. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you got earplugs? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Mark these all at one time. So the overhang is at 12 inches. So we can get three of them. They weigh about 350 pounds each. So let's just do a few of them at a time. And marking that so that we don't have to do it when we're up in the ladder. When we're setting the trusses, we just look at that line and bam, we're done. And uh, mark both sides. But by smacking them around here, getting them in line, then we can do it all just one time instead of up in the air. No fun dancing with one of these things in the wind while you're hanging out 25 feet in the air. Man, they kind of look ugly, don't they? This is what one winter does to wood. Anyway, we'll cover them up and then we're gonna paint them. They haven't deteriorated. You know, they're not in bad shape right now. They just look ugly. You making friends or does everybody just like chicken? So 
So something I noticed that a lot of people do, and I don't want to tell people what to do, but here's what worked for me, is I just hit it one time. That just gives me one line to worry about instead of five different ones to choose from. It's just me, but uh, which one of those is the right one? If you just have one, you just one and done. What I wanna do is I wanna get all of them lined up right there. Yeah, so marking these things all at one time, it's a whole lot easier. And then, So getting about four of these all at the same time makes it a whole lot easier. Then I'll come around and smack around the other ones as we pull these off. So one of the most important things about putting sips together is gluing them together and making them airtight. Now, they're energy efficient, so you might as well put it to the max and make air movement a thing of the past. And using those old straw foam cans, don't ever do that anymore. These hold about, what, five cans have in them. And you keep this gun and you can dial it in to microscopic and it doesn't get on your clothes when you're done. When you're done, you're done and you can use these things up to a year. So what I'm gonna do right here is to airtight these things, get in your corner. Now what I can do with this thing is dial it in to just a microscopic amount. <laughs> that wasn't microscopic, let me dial it in. You can also use the trigger and adjust it by just by feel as you go. So these things, look at that. See that right there? You can dial it into that or dial it out and max it out. But uh, also the time that you're spinning in one place makes a difference. Now this is also an adhesive as well as air movement. So it seals everything. No different than what's in the can, but here's the deal. Here's the big deal, is when you stop, you stop. But when you're gonna put it away, go ahead and close the needle all the way down and shut it down. Now they use a bunch of these things. This is for adhesive and a little bit of foam. And in 40 minutes, this thing's gonna be rock solid. Now let's put up the sips. This panel's ready to go.
So we're setting trusses. That one's fine, that one's set. This one is a little bit too long. So right here, I have my mark, and that mark is supposed to go right here. It's extended a little bit long. It's about half an inch long. That line has to be on this side of this right here. So I need to move this over. So I can't actually physically push it because we've got cross bracing securing it. So old fashioned all trick. And pull again. And there we are. The sun's gone down. This is as far as we got. We got some walls. We got some trusses. I'm still gonna put up one more truss before dark. Oh, I got visitors here. Let's look at. <laughs> so if I were watching this, I would be wondering why are you guys putting up trusses before all the walls are done? Or why are you putting up walls before the trusses are done? And I would be asking that myself, but here's the deal. The answer is this, is pole barn, one of the oldest styles of building. And then the SIPS panels are the most advanced commercial way of building. So I am mixing the two. In order to fly in the SIPS panels vertical, I can't have the trusses in the way or a roof in the way. And because they are such big wind sails, these SIPS, I have to support it as I go with the trusses. So the trusses have to come in with the walls. Otherwise, I may have a surprise when I get here in the morning and find all of my work is for nothing. But it's going well, but it's a slow process, but they are airtight, insulated. I don't know how many pole barns are R28, and this is gonna be nice and toasty. The concrete is great to work on. That makes it all easier to build. And that's why we did that first, but I've got a couple more trusses, so I'm gonna let you guys go. See y'all tomorrow. Good night. So setting trusses is not for the faint of heart. Trusses, as they just stand in their place, move all over the place. And then the tops move back and forth. And what you see here is just temporary bracing that I did just for overnight. And that's bracing back and forth so they're not gonna blow down. If you've ever worked in a high wind area, you learn to put a diagonal on several. You don't have to put it on all of them. I see a lot of people that don't ever do it. And yet you only have to do it to a couple of them and it secures all of them because they're all connected with the purlins. The problem that I see a lot of people do is they go ahead and put the purlins and the purlins tie everything together. That's all great and fine. You can do an amazing job of doing that very accurately. What you are doing is you are presenting more weight and the higher you go with your purlins and the more weight you're putting on a top. And that top can just domino effect fall over and take them all down. That's what I never want to see happen again. Diagonals and then purlins transfer all of that diagonal. Strong backs make everything rigid. Some people call it a rat run. That's just a flat two by 
and a strong back works, the two bys work against each other to be even more rigid. I don't want to condone anybody that is faint of heart to ever try to do trusses because they're crazy. They're moving all over. Your equilibrium gets way off because you are looking at the ground moving as these things are moving. So I don't have any fear. Um, I guess it was a, I guess it was June 28th of 1995. I had a bull riding accident. And ever since then, I have no fear of some of the crazy driving that I do with materials, weather conditions. I have no fear of heights. I do have a healthy respect for it because it's that sudden stop that gets you. Jumping around in here is not a big deal. Rock climbing is not a big deal to me. Um, everything I do. That first one was the first one on the pile and it's a little wonky. So I've got to do some work to that one. So I don't want that one to establish the line for everything else. Hope the rain stops, sun's coming out. We still got more work to do. Nonetheless, you do whatever you need to do that you feel safe with. Do the diagonals though on your trusses before you start doing your purlins. Secure your trusses. He concurs. If you wanna encourage us to continue sharing our modern mountain living, then go ahead and subscribe and share it with your friends. In the meantime, I've picked out a video over here just for you.